Hey everybody, my name is Sam and welcome back to SamCraft. Welcome to the series of building my new workshop, my next shop, and the one that I'm excited to bring you guys along with for the full build, start to finish. In today's video, we're gonna kickstart the project by doing the foundation. This is gonna be a freestanding block foundation portable style workshop inspired, but still one that ends up rock solid in the end. Let's go ahead and pack up our stuff, hit the road, and I'll see you guys out there on the new property. Welcome to part one of the build of Sam's workshop. Whether this be the new workshop of Granacre Homestead or the new home of Sam Craft, it all starts here. Step one of this workshop build is the foundation. Now, I'm gonna be building this as if it was a storage shed off of a commercial lot that they came and plopped and dropped here on the property. I'm just gonna be building it here on the property instead of somewhere else. The reason I'm doing a building structure such as that is I want to have the option, should we ever decide to move this, change it, or I don't know, sell it and upgrade, I don't know. We have that option to do that in the future as opposed to building a permanent fixed structure to the ground that kind of locks us in and well, you have no choice at that point. Probably the number one reason I'm going that way is because my current workshop is fixed, locked in, can't go anywhere. And I don't want to repeat that mistake. So we've roughly got our capstone blocks laid out here on the ground, roughly have the 10 foot long four by fours laid out in their skids. Now is the fun part of going through digging it down, leveling everything, and getting ourselves a firm level base foundation to then build everything on top of. I hate foundation work. How I'm going about doing this foundation is to lay out one line and to be very picky on that first. I spend a lot of time on this front edge, this front skid, making sure it is level, it is exactly angled the way I want the whole building to face because that's gonna be the runner point or the skid that I measure everything else off of. Once I had that leveled out and in line exactly like I wanted, I then used my tape measure and measured the rest of the skids off of it. I knew that my spacing for my particular building is three foot three inches from center to center on the skids. So I just measured it, eyeballed where the blocks were to go. Then I could cut out the soil around the block, giving a lot of room about an inch and a half perimeter wiggle room to make sure I can move them around. And that is how I went about laying out everything. As far as how to dig a hole, I don't have a lot of tips on how to dig a hole, except I did finally find a, a style or a pattern that works for me with our soil type and just what I'm doing right now. What I did is I scored around the perimeter of the block and then I stabbed my spade in about three to four inches into the ground. That gave me a rectangle cut into the soil. After that, I went ahead and chopped up that rectangle into about four bricks, and then I removed the bricks one at a time. That made a pretty clean removal of the sod and the topsoil, as well as made it manageable sizes for me to be able to toss or throw or at least carry to another area, and it seemed to work okay for me. It's pretty efficient as far as what I'm able to do, so I don't know, maybe it'll work for you. I purchased all of the 4x8x16 by by solid concrete blocks, also called capstones. I purchased those myself for this project, but the larger blocks, the traditional 8x8x16 eight by by blocks, I am actually repurposing from our garden at our current homestead. We figure, why not? We're going to have to eventually bring stuff over. Might as well tear up a little bit of raised bed gardens that are, well, dormant and dead right now this time of year anyway, and save myself about $350 a piece. At least I think that's what the price are currently, and repurpose some material. So, just a little explanation of why those larger blocks look really dirty, cruddy, and old. It's because they're dirty, cruddy, and old. By far the most tedious part of this whole project is doing this foundation. Thankfully though, with the design of building I am constructing and my foundation style, I don't have to be dead on within half inch, quarter inch on everything. That is really beneficial because this style foundation, digging 20 footers of sorts, plus blocks and leveling and spacing, 
can be extremely difficult to do with one person. The reason my foundation doesn't have to be dead on is that my floor is gonna be on top of it and my skids are not designed to end with the outside perimeter or the ends of the building. The skids as they are right now are a little bit longer than the building, so I'll be able to trim them to fit at the end. And then as far as the width, the building floor is actually gonna overhang the widest part of the skids by about a foot on each side. That way it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. If it's not perfectly parallel or perpendicular or whatever P word for geometry you wanna use, it's gonna be okay. Everything will be solid, secure, perfectly fine in the end and you're never really going to notice the only time we're going to see this is out of sorts or wonky is right now as i'm building it and as we construct it once it's all covered up no one will ever know now i use the phrase no one will ever know in the sense of it's still going to be structurally sound it's still going to be solid there's not going to be any corners cut i'm just saying that if it's off a half inch here or there you shouldn't see it in the end Notice how I'm backpedaling. I go from no one will ever know to you shouldn't see it in the end. Oh well. So I am down to my last row. I have the blocks roughly laid out. I'm gonna go around, dig my little footer holes, and that'll be it, I hope. That will be it for the majority of the digging and grunt work of this project. the holes have been dug for the foundation of this workshop next thing I'm going to do is bring over some patio paver base it's kind of a mixture of rock and sand and it compacts really really well I'm gonna put about half a bag a piece in every single one of these holes and then tamp it down to a level firm base from there I'll put the block on I'll make sure it is perfectly level and then we'll build up from there finding the lowest point possible to get level on all of these across the board
Now that all the holes are dug and prepped, backfilled, and tamped with the paver base, we can finally, 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 finally begin putting the blocks in the ground, leveling each one, and start to actually visually do something with this project. Uh, it's been all day just to get to this point, and visually, not a lot seems to have happened. It's the way it goes. All the hard work's down under the ground so that the stuff you see above ground doesn't fall or look wonky. I'm going to start at that corner, the one closest to the camper over there. The reason I'm starting at that corner is that's the high spot of the terrain and the ground and the lay of the land. I'm going to start there with as short as block as possible while keeping all the wood up safely away from the ground and all that stuff. And then I'll work my way across just putting the first blocks on this row down and leveling them. I'm not going to worry about bringing them all to the same level yet. I just want to get them in line and level on the ground. After that, and I get the 4x4s put on top of them, I'll be able to see how much I need to come up and down to bring everything correct and support across the span of the beams. Once I have this first run done, I'll move across and repeat the same process. That then is going to dictate the spacing and the whole level plane of this workshop going forward. Well, that was a ton of work. <laughs> that was a lot of work. Getting the foundation laid out, everything dug, everything tamped, leveled, and all things of the sort. In fact, it was a very tedious job. It was one of those that you really hate to do. However, the whole time I was doing it, I kept telling myself, this is the most important step. Spend the time now. You won't regret it later. Quit your whining. Get the work done. <laughs> So I'm glad it is done. In the end, everything is laid out and leveled out perfectly. Those block foundations are super strong, super level. I've jumped all over those beams. They're not going anywhere. And it is so much more well supported than anything you would get from a commercial plop and drop shed that I have no concerns at all that it's going to really settle or have any issues. And I just, I'm happy with it. This is going to be it for the foundation. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. If you're interested in this build series, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell as I release the next whoever knows, however many it takes until I get the new workshop built. Otherwise, take care. I'll see you guys next time in the workshop or out there in the field again, building the workshop.